Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to walk you through capitalizing your fixed asset expenditures related to buildings. So let's talk about what can you capitalize when it comes to buying um, or potentially constructing a building. So let's start with buying. Um, obviously the price tag, whatever you have to pay to actually get the building counts as part of your capital expenditures. You get to debit that to the building account. Any closing costs you have to pay or any commissions to a real estate agent, you'll find that this is very similar to the treatment of land. Land and buildings are both kind of real estate items. So they usually involve real estate agents. They usually involve titles, legal fees, so forth and so on. So any of that you have to pay, that's essentially required to buy um, real estate. So in this case, the buildings. So you're allowed to include that. Any remodeling and replacement costs for electrical, plumbing, structure, et cetera. Now notice the key here, like electrical, plumbing, and structure. Those are items that essentially, um, in order for a building to be up to code, to allow it to be used, if those things are deficient, you're gonna have to fix them. And so these are required items. And it may not just be these three things. Um, there could be other situations of required items, um, such as like say the roof, right? You need to have a, a stable roof on a building. Um, but essentially, you know, these are just examples of the, the golden rule with fixed asset purchases. Anything required to acquire or to put into use is allowed to be capitalized into the asset. So in this case, the purchase price, closing cost, any commissions, all of that is required to acquire the building. But then anything of this nature where you have these kind of required fixes in order to actually use the object that would also be allowed to um, be capitalized into the building account. Now, construction is a little bit different because in construction, you're not buying a finished product. So for construction, if you end up paying an architect or a designer to actually design your building, um, that counts because you can't build something that doesn't have a blueprint, right? So that counts as, as a capital, capital expenditure for the building. Um, you have to usually pay permits um, to begin construction. So those permits count as required to, to, in this case, acquire is the same as build, right? Um, excavation costs. This one is really interesting because sometimes when you manipulate your land to make it ready for its intended use, that gets capitalized to the land account. However, let's say you have an existing piece of land already that was not intended to house a newly constructed building, but now you have to dig a giant hole in it. You have to excavate that land in order to build the bottom structure of the building. Well, that counts as a cost needed for the building, even though it's a manipulation of the land. Um, so excavation costs after the fact um, to a piece of land actually count toward the capital expenditures of the building that you're excavating for. And of course, the cost of construction itself, right? Like, I mean, that's the price tag of a constructed building versus like the sticker price um, for a purchased building. All right, again, you, you know, it's not easy to just memorize all these things. The best thing to do is just follow that golden rule. Any expenditure to acquire or make ready for use, that counts as something you can capitalize. All right, so here we go. An example of a purchased building on May 20th. FlyerCorp purchased an existing building for $500,000 by writing a note. On May 22nd, they paid cash to have the electrical system rewired and the roof replaced, each of which was required for the building to be safely placed in operation. Record the journal entries for FlyerCorp's building purchase. So we have two journal entries here. We have one on May 20th when we are actually buying a building. And then we've got another one on May 22nd when we are doing some work on that building. Now, let's start with May 20th when we buy. The only thing that happens that day is we purchase the building by signing a half million dollar note. So we've got a credit to note payable, half a million dollars. That note payable is essentially saying this is the cash we are promising to pay for this building. So it's basically the, the cash equivalent. Um, and in this case, uh, because that is the price tag on the building, we get to capitalize that to the building account. So building half a million dollars. That's our May 20th journal entry. Now on May 22nd, it says we paid 24,000 cash for the electrical system and 35,000 cash for the roof. So we know we've got a credit to cash. 
of 24 plus 35, so that is $59,000. The question here is, what is the debit? We already bought the building. We bought it on the 20th, so we can't debit building again, right? Well, that's actually not right. We can debit building again, because even though this is happening on a different day, this is still an allowable capitalized expenditure related to getting that building ready for its intended use. The building cannot be safely operated without these items. They are necessary. So even though it's happening two days later, you still get to debit that building account, which puts the total historical cost of the building at $559,000, not just the $500,000 that you paid up front. All right. Let's take a look at constructive. Um, on May 25th, Flyer Corp paid an architect $40,000 to cash to draw blueprints for a new building on a recent land purchase. Construction required Flyer Corp to purchase a permit, which it paid $3,000 cash for on June 1st. On November 22nd, construction of the building was complete. Flyer Corp paid by writing a $1.25 million note. On December 1st, Flyer Corps purchased additional landscaping on the outside of the building for $10,000 cash. Record the journal entries for all of this. So um, let's just take it piece by piece by piece. We start at May 25th. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my dates listed out. That way we don't miss anything. Next date we have is June 1st. Next date we have is November 22nd. Um, and the last date we have is December 1st. Okay, so we have four different dates. On May 25th, we are paying an architect cash to draw blueprints for a new building. So we've got credit cash, $40,000. Now notice, there is no building yet. We haven't actually bought a building. However, architect fees for construction of the new building are considered required, and therefore they are a capitalizable expenditure. And so even though there is not actually a building yet, we are going to get to put this into our building account, okay? Um, on June 1st, uh, that is when we paid the permit to construct the building. Again, a required expenditure. So following that same logic, building, cash, $3,000, right? The, the permit is allowed to be capitalized to our building account. On November 22nd, construction was complete and we sign a $1.25 million note to pay for the building. So the, this is the actual sticker price. These were the construction costs. And so, of course, the sticker price is allowed to be put into the building. So building, only this time it was a note payable, 1.25 million. Notice, just like the last example, it doesn't matter that everything's not occurring on the same date. What matters is we're putting the right historical cost into the building account. And that gives us to our last date, December 1st. We purchased additional landscape on the outside of the building for $10,000 cash. So we definitely have a credit to cash for $10,000. And if you thought that we were going to debit building here, this was a trick. Landscaping does not count to be capitalized for your buildings. Landscaping is a type of land improvement. And so it is a capitalizable expenditure, just not to the building account. It has to go to the land improvement account because it's a different type of fixed asset. So there are your four journal entries related to this constructive building. All right, that's it for capitalizing expenditures for buildings. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.